Joining us now, Li Fong, friend of the show, a newly independent uh, investigative journalist at LiFong.net, uh, I believe, that, or is it dot com? Dot com. Dot com. com. I'm sorry, dot com. Dot com. All right, LeeFong.com, of which we will have a uh, link down in the description. I am a founding member of said uh, LeeFong.com, and we are very happy to support your work, Lee. You're here to talk about a very important story. Let's put it up there on the screen, um, which is FBI surveillance contractors probed anti-vaccine mandate activists. Lee, you've been on the forefront of exposing a lot of the hijinks uh, that the U.S. intelligence community, the FBI, have been doing by infiltrating groups and, and uh, under the name of national security and others. So so what did you find in this story and what bigger pattern is it part of? Hey, thanks for having me. Um, this was the story is part of a two part series on the threat intelligence industry. This is a subset of the cyber security industry. And, you know, when you hear the term cyber security, you might think authentication or passwords or what have you. But this is actually um, a surveillance industry. You know, this is a, a type of firm that goes into that specializes in going into the parts of the internet of social media that are private. Um, there are a number of firms, you know, about a dozen prominent firms uh, that specialize in this. What they do is that they they go into uh, Reddit forums, WhatsApp groups, signal chats, uh, parts of the dark web. They make fake online identities to gain the trust of the admins or leaders of online organizations or organizations that have an online presence. And they get invites to these private communications. They sweep up uh, the messages, the chats, um, the communications, and they monetize them. They sell them back, uh, these communications, they sell them to the government and to corporations. Uh, they say that they're looking for, quote unquote, threat actors. Um, and, you know, uh, they're largely saying that, you know, we're looking for hackers and other kind of cyber criminals. Mm -hmm. But a big part of what they do is also look at uh, activists. They penetrate activist groups. Um, and they, they research their tactics and strategies uh, and alert their potential targets. So, you know, this is an, a very interesting firm. This is one of the many threat intelligence firms of uh, Flashpoint. And, you know, we obtained uh, their marketing materials and, and some of their other documents. Also, I, I interviewed them. Uh, at a recent cybersecurity conference, and you know they 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 have a history of going after left wing organizations, uh, investigating anti pipeline protesters, anarchists, uh, mm. but also these groups, these worker led organizations that were protesting the 2021 vaccine mandate. Mm -hmm. um, these were, in this particular instance, these were workers in the airline industry, uh, pilots, uh, stewardesses, what what have you, uh, who were not comfortable with the uh, 2021 vaccine mandate, you know, these were essential workers, frontline workers, many of whom were the very first people to be infected with COVID-19 and then recover. So, you know, they made, I think, the very reasonable argument that the uh, vaccine mandate should not apply to them because there's no exemption for people who recovered from the virus and had natural immunity. They were protesting this. And it looks like uh, surveillance contractors like Flashpoint were investigating them. They were getting into their private signal chats. They were looking into uh, their private communications. And so in order for the FBI to do some of this stuff directly, they would need warrants. They'd need some probable cause. Some of it, you know, some of it they can get away with. Others, like getting into private signal chats, I would think they would need some type of, type of warrant for that. And so the, they end up, these kind of surveillance contractors end up creating a kind of false distinction to me between the, the activity of the FBI that is prohibited and the act activity of these private contractors, which is allowed. So what is the FBI's role in relationship with, with these companies? And is there an argument to be made that they're actually, they are just arms of the FBI and ought to be subject to the same laws? Well, there is, a, you know, a little bit of a gray area here where we don't know exactly, you know, where the line begins and starts with the client relationship. You know, a lot of these firms are publicly contracted with the FBI. Uh, Flashpoint is publicly contracted with the FBI, has worked with them for many years. Uh, many of the other firms that I profiled are, you know, working for other intelligence agencies and, and the FBI. Um, but they're also working for corporate clients here, too. And, you know, I, I think that's right. You know, this for the FBI to directly monitor the private communications of Americans, you know, they, they require a, a warrant. You know, it's a, it's a Fourth Amendment issue. But 
using a third party to gain access to these private communications uh, represents somewhat of a, of a backdoor, uh, right? So like the, you have a, just like the FBI has a long history of using uh, confidential in, informants, uh, confidential human um, intelligence analysts and, and informants to um, monitor and, and spy on groups where they might not have direct access. These private contractors, these private spies, um, again, represent uh, a way for the agency to gain access to materials that they don't normally have, have, have any kind of insight into. And, you know, we're seeing a, a greater demand for this type of surveillance after the Discord leaks. Um, these firms um, publicly advertise uh, Flashpoint, you know, this, this one firm that, that monitored the anti-mandate activists, um, they, they publicly ad, uh, advertised that they are looking into Discord chats, that they can penetrate uh, Discord communities and after the Discord leaks, you know, there, there's just so much demand that we get into these private communications because, again, these uh, Discord leaks appeared on a private Discord server. Um, and, you know, allegedly these documents sat there for months without the government knowing um, this was a huge embarrassment. So right. there's more of a demand for these type of firms to go in and spy on gaming communities, you know, activist communities, any type of community where potential uh, um, illegal or, or nefarious activity is happening. You know, Lee, one of the things constant I kind of see throughout your work is just the exposure of the slow creep of the surveillance state. Like it starts with the FBI and the DHS under a specific mandate. And then, you know, you helped with Ken Clippency and expose that new and, you know, disinformation complex. And now as part of your series, we're talking about anything from vegans to anti-vaccine mandate. It really just seems like they are willing to stick their tentacles into something if it goes against any basic established power center in the U.S.? Or am I reading it the wrong way? Well, look at it this way. Uh, we have uh, a massive infrastructure in this country, government infrastructure and, you know, government programs that fund an infrastructure that is based on surveillance. And there's this evolving mission um, that kind of skyrocketed since September 11th to find, you know, potential terrorists, to find threats that are, you know, vaguely defined by the national security state. And this is another great example of that that kind of fits into this rubric. Um, Flashpoint, this one particular firm, started out as a small consultancy uh, from a guy named Evan Coleman, who went out and he worked with people who were infiltrating mosques and Muslim community centers. They were, you know, dressing up and going in and recording uh, these communities and then taking that information back and selling it to the FBI. Uh, Evan Coleman then spun out his own firm and went online and and, and found, you know, Al-Qaeda message boards and, you know, ISIS online social media accounts. He would save all the information to these multi-terabyte databases and then go to U.S. law enforcement and say, look, you know, I'm an expert. I have all these online communications. And he's, he's monetized that content. You know, he's been accused of um, uh, helping wrongfully uh, convict some Muslim Americans, like in the, the Fort Dix case. But, you know, this... Right. That was uh, 15 years ago. Now today, as the war on terror has wound down, um, Flashpoint, rather than also winding down, has actually grown. It's grown exponentially. It's a huge firm. Um, they just acquired a, another uh, threat intelligence company last year. They're partnering with Google Cloud. They've, they've got AI tools. And instead of targeting potential you know, Al-Qaeda suspects, they're monitoring environmental activists. They're monitoring conservatives who are concerned about the mandate. You know, all they have is a hammer. So, you know, everything looks like nails uh, for these surveillance contractors. They, they need a, a new enemy, a new kind of threat to target, uh, to monetize. And it's, it's a lot like these other kind of uh, uh, mission creep of uh, the security state, that the, the Department of Homeland Security, rather than winding down some of its programs, um, now it's it's kind of expanding its, its, its outreach and saying, oh, we, we've got to target misinformation or disinformation mm -hmm. online. We need to create these new partnerships with Twitter and, and Facebook to to censor really ordinary First Amendment protected speech. And in your reporting, did you find that it was a connection to the misinformation, disinformation world that allowed for the kind of anti-vaxxer surveillance? Because as you think about the other groups that were, uh, that were targeted, uh, all right, anti-pipeline, Group, they're gonna, they might blow up a pipeline. I can see some potential violence there. The anti-abortion uh, groups that you've, uh, that you've, that you talked about being under surveillance, they've shot abortion doctors. Like, so you can step back and you can say, all right, 
I, I can intellectually see where they're going when it comes to like the potential for violence. Doesn't mean that it justifies kind of breaking Fourth Amendment laws, but I, I see where they're going. When it comes to the vaccine stuff, they might yeah, it might be harmful to themselves, maybe right. ish. Uh, but who like I don't see the are they going to blow up like right. the vaccine facility or something, or is it really it's it's flowing out of the the disinformation complex? I think it's likely it's flowing out of the disinformation complex, but really it's just a, a challenge to to power, mm-hmm. right? You know, you have big corporate centers uh, endorsing these mandates, the government endorsing these mandates. You know, for these airline workers, their own unions aban- abandoned them. You know, a lot, I talked with a lot of these workers. That, you know, their union wouldn't even negotiate them. They wouldn't put some of these decisions up to a vote. And so they had to kind of, these workers had to form their own organizations to protest for, for their rights. You know, that's that's their view. I think the same apply, the same kind of issue applies to some of these vegan and animal rights activists. Um, these folks, you know, some of the particular groups that I've been writing about, they don't have a history of any violence whatsoever. But, you know, I, I published uh, last week um, an FBI memo from the Sacramento field office depicting them as a, um, a bioterror threat mm-hmm. <laughs> under the, the weapons of mass destruction directorate of the FBI, um, you know, using just really in, inflamed and exaggerated rhetoric to justify this kind of national security crackdown on groups, again, just kind of exercising their First Amendment rights. Got it. Well, Lee, you're doing a fantastic job over there. LeeFong.com, as I said, I'm a f- subscriber. I encourage everybody else to become a subscriber. We'll have a link down there, uh, down in the description. We want to be able to support Lee's excellent work here. And uh, you're welcome back on the show anytime, sir. So thank you for joining us. Thanks for your support. Hey, guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now. And Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.